and a good report maketh the bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abided among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despised his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Chapter 16. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. John Obot, a school teacher from Aquabum State, has broken the Guinness World Record for the longest marathon read aloud event. The new Guinness World Record breaker is the son of the late journalist John Obot, who died in active service as the Aquabum State correspondent of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria. Obot beat the 124 hour mark set by Rizbai Isakov, an Indian who previously held the title by clocking 145 hours. Obo started reading on Tuesday, September 12, 2023, at City View Hall, Letters House, World Bridge Hotels and Suites in Uyo, Aquaibum State, and was supported by Uyo Book Club, founded by Dr. Udeme Nana, the Chief Program Director of the Read Mania team. Joining us now on The Morning Show is John Obo, the new Guinness World Record breaker for the longest marathon read aloud event. Good morning, John, and thank you for joining us on The Morning Show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, congratulations. Uh, very proud of you. Uh, my friend Udeme, that uh, Dr. Udeme Nana uh, sent me the Brook newsletter, you know, in which, you know, he had done a, a story saying that this is a triumph for the uh, yes. Uyo Book Club, a triumph uh, for your effort, which is commendable, a triumph also for the Bring Back the Book campaign, uh, you know, which has been on the table. Reading clubs also across Nigeria must be celebrating that your efforts signpost the importance of reading at a time when many of our children have been overtaken by obsession with tablets and uh, social media. But what does this mean for you? Marathon reading, Guinness World Record, you know, and right, you are right there with a place in the sun, deservedly. Yeah, it, it means a whole lot for me and uh, the reading community in Nigeria, uh, especially uh, those very close to me in Akwaibom State, uh, because seeing the success of the Readmania project particularly with the reviving of the reading culture uh, that has been brought on by the success of the Readmania uh, project. It, it means a whole lot for me. Before we started the Readmania project, um, let me say some, uh, some weeks before the Readmania project, conversations around books and its importance in you know, shaping the mentality of people and helping them access a, a pool of resources uh, that, that, that is available to anyone who reads uh, was very gladdening to me. So uh, after the Readmania, we're receiving information, we're receiving uh, uh, notifications of uh, people delving into you know, book-related activities, reading. And uh, so this is very, very gladdening, and uh, it meets the target that we had set before embarking on the Readmania project. Again, congratulations, John. I think it's such a great um, initiative, and also the fact that it's an inspiration to other young people to hopefully take on uh, reading again in, as a culture. But beyond that, it seems like there's something about yeah. Akwaibom and Uyo with regards to breaking records. Only recently, we had Hilda Bassi as well break records, and she is from Akwaibom State. What motivated you to wanting to do this? And what kind of support did you receive? We've heard about the book club in Uyo. We also hear that the governor himself has congratulated you and present at your Readmania was the deputy governor of the state as well as the SSG. What motivated you? What do you hope in the long term? What would this pose for you winning this world record or breaking this world, world record? Yeah, um, the Guinness World Records for the longest marathon reading is not new. It's been there. Uh, started by uh, Deepak Japan, uh, uh, Bajan from Nepal in 2008 
and then uh, buy your day here in Lagos in 2018, and then raise buy off last year, 2022, and now the remainder this year. Uh, my major motivation was the need, the desire to see a reading public. I grew up from a family, like uh, Ruben had said in the beginning, uh, my dad was a journalist, and he insisted that we read. So he had a rich library of various categories of books that we had to you know, dwell on. We read those books, and uh, he will insist that you read those books and then explain back to him what you've read in those books. So I grew up from a, a family that loved books that encouraged us to read. And so that was my primary motivation, to see a reading public, especially a reading public that involved Nigerian youth that were reading, especially the youth. So uh, uh, that was the primary motivation. Growing up, I got to realize that a lot of young persons do not read. They, they seem to be averse to reading except maybe they are compelled by circumstances to read, maybe like examinations, or they have a test, or other form of coursework in school. And that's purely academic. But when you talk about reading for enlightenment, reading to broaden one's perspectives, and all of that, that was very low. You know, you interact with people, you find the shallowness of, you know, uh, uh, how shallow their, their, their knowledge base is. And so I was looking for ways to promote reading, ways to encourage young people to read, because everything is in the book. And so I joined the Yobu Club. As a teacher, I've been encouraging my students. I set up uh, literary clubs in the schools where I teach. And uh, so when uh, in 2000, and, uh, this year, uh, in May, when uh, there was a craze for a Guinness World Records attempt uh, following Hilda Bassi's uh, successful uh, cooking marathon, I said, this is a good platform. This is a nice platform I can also use to draw attention to what I'm passionate about, which is reading. And that was the birth of Readmania. That was the major motivation behind Readmania. Yes, I've received a lot of support. I received support primarily from the Yobu Club that became um, uh, at the forefront you know, of the, of the Readmania project uh, led by Dr. Odemen Nana, who also doubled as the Chief's Programs uh, Director. I also had a, a very capacitous young man, um, uh, Amama Aloysius, who served as the team lead, you know, coordinating the day-to-day -day activities. I received a whole lot of support from uh, the, the Akwa Ibom community uh, the Aquaibom State Government gave me moral support by the presence of the Deputy Governor uh, representing the Governor. I understand the Governor was not in, uh, in, the, in the country as at the moment. And uh, so that was the level of support I had received from the Aquaibom State Government. But largely, the support I received were um, not government based. I did not intend to politicize the Ritmania project, and it is not still politicized up to this moment. Uh, the projects were handling post event. Uh, the setting up of the Readmania Literacy Foundation is ongoing at the moment to further consolidate on the impact of the Readmania. So far, uh, we've had a post-event evaluation and we've seen that the Readmania project had a whole lot of impact. And so we are working on the Readmania Literacy Foundation to consolidate on the impact of, uh, of, that, uh, of that feat. And so that, that, that's a picture of what it was like. Okay. So, I mean, congratulations to you and thank you so much, you know, for following in the footsteps of Bio. And um, I'm really thrilled because when Bio was breaking that record, I was with him, visited for a couple of days. I just want to know the rigor, you know, at your preparation, the rigor at which you prepared, how many hours okay. a day did you read, what breaks did you take, you know, all the intricacies. I know how people had to, you guys had to look for a little kitchen where you were there to cook, to eat and do everything, you know, the mental support. Tell me all of that, number one. Number two will be, how can we develop a reading population in an age of social media? So the, the, the fight before was the fact that, oh, you need to get to a library before you can read. But on your phone, you have the biggest library in the world but you still have a lot of shallow people. In fact, it's as if the bigger the access, the more shallow people have become over the years. So how can we get people on social media or in the age of social media to read? Because those information still out there, but we are not going for it. Okay, um, let me begin with the first. You, you've asked the rigor. Uh, actually, I had prepared a lot uh, for the attempt. Uh, I was watching videos. I was uh, you know, trying to look out for information from those previous uh, record breakers uh, in this category. I watched a lot of videos from BIOS attempt, and uh, I got some snippets of information of, of what to do. So I prepared a lot. I did a, a cumulative rehearsal of more than 200 hours before the actual attempt. I also uh, checked up with the medical team 
to get to understand uh, what I should do in terms of medical preparations and uh, dietary preparations and then mental preparation also. I had to encourage myself, motivate myself to be able to, you know, meet up with what was going to lie ahead of me, uh, a whole lot of, a whole lot of uh, 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 challenge, obstacles, you know, coordinating a team as large as the ones we work with. We worked with over 80 volunteers, you know, working with us during the, the, the attempt. So we had to put together so many uh, uh, things. But uh, the attempt itself uh, was very interesting. I went into the attempt kind of uh, um, anxious because, of course, a rehearsal isn't the same with, uh, a, uh, with a live performance. And so uh, the attempt itself was both interesting and filled with some you know, levels of anxiety. But as I proceeded, the anxiety uh, dissipated. So uh, the rigor was just, uh, I, I went in there, I read, I took breaks, five minutes break every one hour, uh, which were not enough because... Uh, when I step out from the hall for the break, I have to check in with the medical team who would take some samples, check my vitals, and confirm that I'm okay. Before they are done with that, that's about three minutes. And so uh, going to maybe eat or try to just uh, close my eyes a bit. Uh, so five minutes was not enough uh, for me, but I had to make do with what was available as per the Guinness World Records guidelines. And so that was uh, the stuff. We spent uh, the night over, my, my, my team of volunteers, everyone had to you know, adjust uh, to be able to meet with uh, the Guinness World Records uh, guidelines to, uh, okay. to assist John. us, to help play their role in achieving uh, uh, the, uh, the Readmania. But to your second question, how can we encourage a reading culture in the age of digital technology? Actually, digital technology is supposed to be a blessing uh, in the sense, like you've rightly pointed out, we have our libraries now at hand, in our hands. Uh, we can read while flying from uh, Kwaibum here to, uh, Kwaibum to Lagos here. I was reading all through and I was reading on my device. The, the issue is not about having access to the libraries. It's about the motivation to read, the incentive to read. Why should one read? Uh, we, we, we have the libraries, we have the books all around, we have, we have, the, we have access to the stuff. But there is, there is a missing link between the reason why one is supposed to read, the motivation to read. For example, when I am looking for information about anything, I first look in the book. I try to, uh, uh, you know, go into, to, to find out if I have a PDF uh, guide on such a thing. Maybe, for instance, I want to learn how to cook eba or how to cook uh, uh, any soup in the Yoruba land, I'd like to try to see if there are e-books you know, for me to read that. That's already a motivation for me, but so many people don't see it that way. A lot of persons see it that maybe they have to look for somebody to ask, make a call, or something. So first and foremost is to provide a motivation to read. Mm -hmm. I believe that individuals, corporate organizations, uh -huh. beyond government can play a very big role in this. Done. Yes. I guess you won't need to consult a book if you want yes, to Yes, you cook, want to say something? If you want to cook a uh, afang or mm. a fiafere or a pan mm. or, you know, mm. 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 <laughs> that one will, need, will not need a book. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I get your point about read mania. No, there are cookbooks. There are cookbooks for that. Yeah. I know, but you yeah. will need to consult yeah. a book to cook that, I guess. Anyway, but <laughs> let me ask you. Your ambition yeah. is to become a writer. Okay, we've been talking about uh, Read yes. Mania. We've been talking about the fact that you're also a media practitioner. You're associated with XIFM, right? Okay, what's next for you? Uh, yes. What's your plan yes, about XI, your writing FM, ambition? Yeah. You know, your writing ambition. Very quickly. Yeah. Are you working on that yes, already? Uh, my plan for writing... Yes, yes, I'm working on that already. My plans for writing stems from the, uh, from the experiences I gathered during the Readmania. I want, to, I want to document, I want to give a, a detailed account of what Readmania was all about, starting from the applications and then uh, the background information and the back-end story that people did not see. Uh, everyone was seeing what we put out there, which was uh, the actual Readmania, but a lot of uh, things were going on behind the scenes, and so I'd like to document that. I went through uh, the internet trying to look out for books written by former Guinness World Record uh, breakers, and I found uh, virtually none. So it means people are not documenting uh, attempts for, you know, to help the next batch of people that would like to attempt a Guinness World Record. And I, I'd like to be at the forefront of doing that. I'd like to be a pioneer in documenting what it takes to attempt a Guinness World Record. So I'm already working on that. Um, uh, I have a tentative title, Journey Through Hell, because that's what it was. Uh, uh, I was uh, it was a journey through hell, uh, the, the, the Romania, from my uh, experience. So 
I'm working on that, and it's going to be out very soon. And then beyond that, I will go uh, uh, further to you know, publish other books. I've been writing, but I've not published. I've been writing various uh, uh, stories uh, that I am now beginning to consider to publish into books. Well, thank you very much, John Obot, for joining us on The Morning Show. We wish you all the best. Congratulations again, and we hope that your mission to get more people reading will be achieved.